Welcome to the second installment of my record vlog. Now, as I had stated previously, the idea was that I'd, you know, show what I'm getting every day from the record store. Now, since I decided to do that, I've been to the store about a hundred times. I've gotten tons of stuff in the mail. Of course, I was there just yesterday. But we're talking, I'm looking around at how much stuff I've accumulated since I did the first video, and it's pretty ridiculous. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of jump in with something that I've been meaning to talk about. Now this stuff I picked up, you know, previously. I uh, got turned on to it by a kid that works at one of the record stores here in the town where I live. The name of the store is Metavinyl. It's a great place, records only. Sort of a boutique type of a store. Nice place, real clean, sort of has the... Uh, look of uh, almost like an art gallery a little bit you know real clean lines hardwood floors just uh, you know some pretty cool old rock prints on the walls but anyway done very well uh i don't even check the vinyl there you know you can tell by the price i mean the stuff the only stuff that's in bad condition uh as far as you know the records you can see you know different you know obviously the condition of the sleeve is the dollar stuff. And he's got some of the best dollar stuff I've seen too. Anyway, so what I want to talk about was I got, there's an artist, his name is William Anyabor. He's Nigerian. He's a solo artist. This is his box set. William Anyabor. So he's Nigerian. He got kind of trendy. His stuff got really collectible. Uh, his records are really hard to find. The original pressings of his records are very difficult to find now. Um, and they do, you know, they might be coming from Nigeria if you do find one. And just to give you an idea, someone was asking $50 for a thrashed record with no sleeve. $50. And that was one of his, I think it was uh, Modern Lover, is one of it, or excuse me, not Modern Lover, Good Lover. No, Good Name. Good Name Something Lover. I forget I have it right here, I believe. I don't have it. I do not. Great lover. Great lover. Anyway, William Anyabor. And so, to give you an idea, so this is the box that I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, so there's three volumes of the box set, apparently. Is that true? Boy, I'm getting really bad with this information. Anyway, uh, I think there's two volumes. And the first one is hard to find, even, period, of reissues. Anyway, so let me show you something here. So here he is, okay? So here he is in his studio. Can you see that? There he is. He's got a few synthesizers, a couple different reel-to-reel -reel decks, other synthesizers, Recording devices, all analog, uh, microphones everywhere. I mean, look at that. The guy has got the setup. If you're a musician, you know, when I saw this photo, the first thing I thought was, wow, look at his setup. Look at all the gear he has. So he does everything. He wrote the music. I believe he even composed and arranged. All works composed and arranged. Recorded at Willie Films Music Laboratory in Nugu, Nigeria. Reissued by Luakabop, looks like. I'm trying to see who produced this stuff. William Anyabor. Hmm. There's a website. He he is no longer with us, I believe. No, he is no longer with us. And so he's got this setup now. Apparently, legend has it nobody knows where he got all that gear. And he was, you know, he was a sort of a, you know. Um, not mysterious, but, you know, sort of a, no one really knew a whole lot about him. I guess he must have been pretty, uh, you know, sort of a private person. But, wow, his music is really cool. It's like electro-pop, you know, pretty heartfelt lyrics. Uh, and this is a great song, and here it is. It's on, it's on, this is Anything You Sow. So these are EPs, actually. So there's from, you know, three to four or five songs on most of them. And so in a way, getting the box set was sort of a better deal. So the box set has all the reissued EPs. I think there's six or seven EPs total. 
or eight. And then there's another LP, which is sort of, it's a two, it's a gatefold two record LP set that is, uh, it, it's sort of like a greatest or, you know, greatest hits type thing. So then it has a sampling of songs. So there's that you can get to kind of get introduced to them, I suppose. Or you can buy the individual EPs. I'd say get the EPs or just get the box set. But it's really cool. Just, you know, everything's synthesized, you know, with beatboxes, drum machines. And, but it's real, it's kind of poppy. It's not quite as bubblegummy as like the sound, Soweto sound, if you're familiar with African music, African pop type stuff. Soweto music, the music from Soweto, which is sort of like, I think, Graceland, Paul Simon's Graceland, he got a lot of his ideas from that Soweto sound, which is sort of, now it's real kind of electrified and sort of bubblegummy, 80s style pop, but it does have that sort of, whoa, 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 you know, that sort of like, the choruses are sort of African style choruses, and it's, uh, the Soweto music, I have one compilation that, uh, it's all sung in English, and then this is sung in English as well. Um, rather than their native tongue. Anyway, anything you sow, so that's it. That's this is a, I mean, they're all good. They really are. You know, some of it is a little funky, but it's like electro pop is how I describe it. But this song is great right here. When the, when the going is smooth and good. When the going is smooth and good, many, many people will be your friends. <laughs> when the going, and you know, and then it goes on, but when the going becomes tough, Many, many of them will run away. I mean, it's just awesome. Like, this this song is... And that is what I mean. <laughs> and that is what I'm saying. <laughs> when the going is good, <laughs> you'll have many friends. And it's funny because, you know, I got this other compilation from this... It's a it's a Soul Jazz Records. What I have it right here. It's a... Uh, there's a couple of them. Soul Jazz, so I'm kind of digressing a little bit. But, so I got this other... A uh, box set for for record day release uh, from Soul Jazz Records, and what it is is it's disco, soul, and funk from Nigeria as well. Uh, each uh, single is a different artist, but um, there's a song that's very similar to this. Going is good. It's a song about you know that you there you will have friends when times are good. And when the times are bad, your friends will go away. There will be no friends around. So incidentally, there's another, here's another box set of 45s, 70s. Uh, what this is, is it's uh, five bespoke original 1970s Soul 45. So this is on Soul Jazz Records as well. This is not necessarily um, Nigerian. Uh, it really doesn't say Richard Brown, Norma Jean. Johnny Adams, Brief Encounter, and Arnold Blair. So those are just, you know, those are Americans, I guess. Uh, so anyway, that goes back here again. But yeah, William Anyabor, highly collectible now. He got, I guess, a Fela Kuti, another African, I believe Nigerian as well, artist, kind of started this. You know, first his stuff became real collectible and kind of hot amongst the collectors. The price of his stuff went up. And now there's a lot of, you know, you see a lot of Fela Kuti um, reissued stuff. I haven't really, I haven't listened to him personally, so I don't really know a lot about him. And then just some of these other, some of the other EPs then. Uh, there's uh, uh, Crashes in Love. So the box set has an EP called Crashes in Love as well. But apparently there's two different Crashes in Love that have different songs. Crashes in Love, uh, Tomorrow, there's another one, there he is. There's also Good Lover, and I know that's another one. And then this one, excuse me, Great Lover? Ah, gosh, I can't, I can't even remember the, the title. Anyway, this, this box set has Good Name, Hypertension, Body and Soul, and the other crashes in love. So those are all EPs is what they are. And then there's a bonus 7-inch in here as well. Why doesn't it say... This is number 2. Anyway, there is this, another 7-inch. There's a 7-inch in here. There's a book. 
and it's 2,365 of 3,000 hand numbered. This. So the boxes could become, you know, collectible not too long from now. Yeah, who knows? Anyway, so there's that. And then, you know, there's a guy that I get. Okay, I've also mentioned before Nazo Fredo or Dylan works at the record store. Um, we meet about once a week. We have, and I've been buying records from him. No. F R E D D O N A S O underscore F R E D D O. Nazo Fredo is his username on Discogs. He has about 290 things for sale. He's got cool stuff, but of course, I'm buying all the good stuff, it seems like. So you might want to get on it. Anyway, I got another batch of stuff from him, which I will show you. John Coltrane, The Bethlehem Years. Hopefully I didn't show that before. Hmm. So it's Coltrane. It's good. Uh, bop period stuff. I also got a Ramones. First pressing in shrink wrap. Ramones. Uh, Pleasant Dreams. I haven't even listened to it, actually. So this must be one of the later ones. Anyway, it's in shrink. Uh, very good plus, very good plus. First pressing. U.S. first pressing. Couldn't pass that up. Certainly not. There is, by the way, uh, something's written on the shrink wrap. A price of five ninety five. Must be from about 20 years ago. Who's do First pressing of... Flip Your Wig. Of course, they're from Minneapolis, which is where I'm from. Husker Du. Started out in the, you know, the hardcore scene on SST Records with Black Flag and Saccharine Trust and Worm. The descendants were on SST. Anyway, Husker Du, of course, I think I may have mentioned their trajectory as far as the development of their music. In fact, they did. This is another, in a previous video, Flip Your Wig. That's a pop, see this is a popier, certainly, mellower, certainly not so much on the hardcore side. I think this is, this is the one, yeah, it makes no sense at all. There, there was actually a video for that that was on MTV with Bob Mould kind of bouncing around with his belly, his guitar playing like that, big belly, Bob Mould, funny. And this is on SST, so, you know, so great. That it's not. Oh, you know. So they were on Warner Brothers at some point. I wonder if this. I wonder if this record was on Warner Brothers and that because the video, they had a video for makes no sense at all. I know. Anyway, uh, hopefully I didn't show this before. Lodger. I think I did. Never mind. Forget about that. Oh, I'm becoming redundant. Uh, I also got. Concert in Japan, special promotion, live in Japan, John Coltrane. This is awesome. It's really cool because Pharaoh Sanders and Alice Coltrane play um, on this album as well. In the show, they are announced in the beginning. Okay, now I know this is certainly more recent. Okay, so I might have gotten some of the stuff I got from Dylan a little bit mixed up. But anyway, and I may have mentioned it previously. This is another promo copy. It's got the promo sticker, John Coltrane, Sunship, Impulse Records. This was kind of expensive. Uh, this is a great record as well. I've seen the reissues for it. I just love it when I see the reissues and the records are and I'm like, oh, I have the original of that. Thank God I don't have to get a reissue. You know, the reissues is really... I'm really over reissues. I'm selling all the reissues that I have. I'm selling them. Some of them, sometimes I buy jazz reissues because the stuff is, can be hard to get. I mean, you can get it on Discogs, but sometimes I, you know, I just want to hear it as soon as I can. Yeah, you know, that's, that's just the way it is. Oh, I just noticed something. Anyway, I'm not going to. Okay. Also, The Clash. First pressing of Give Him Enough Rope. And so, you know, Give Him Enough Rope is going to be one of those, you know, that situation where the second album that an artist makes they had all that time, you know, to make the first album. And so there's great material on it that they had a lot of time to work on when they weren't famous, when there weren't pressures, when all they had to do was concentrate on their art. 
well, the second album, now they have a record deal. And they have to make a second album, you know, I guess, a deadline. And sometimes they come out, you know, not so great. And I think that this is probably the weakest album that they did, really. Yeah. Certainly. I mean, it's. I think it's pretty good, actually. There's some good songs, like, you know, Jeannie's been working with her drug squad, drug squad, safe European home. I mean, it's a rocking record, actually. But, uh, and, you know, it's... But, it, you know, the, the, the even the whole concept is sort of give him enough rope. You know, it's a... It looks like a Chinese guy on a burrow. I don't know why I think he's Chinese, because he kind of has one of those sort of communist looking, like, little hats, like with the brown suit, but then it looks like kind of more of a western theme with a guy with a six shooter on his hip being eaten by vultures. Give him enough rope. It, you know, it's just sort of like, okay. I mean, combat rock. Okay, I get it. London Calling. Sure. Even the first one, The Clash. But that, I don't know. Anyway. Archie Shep, may have mentioned him before. So Archie Shep was, you know, another impulse, an artist, limelight. I think this is, uh, oh, this is Prestige, is the record company. Uh, Archie Shep, you know, he's a jazz musician, bop, free jazz type. Well, you know, mostly free jazz, from what I've heard. And some of the stuff is pretty out there, but it's really cool. Cool record, cool cover. Uh, yeah, Archie Shep, definitely. Can you see that in the background? You see it in behind me, by my head? That's an Archie Shep album, a reissue. A really good one as well. See that? It's from Germany. I don't even know what it's called. It doesn't have any. It's just him and a couple guys on the cover. Yeah, it's really... But anyway, the Archie Shep I got from Dylan. Oh, this is in the shrink wrap as well. Right? Yeah. Okay. Prestige. Now, this I got from Dylan previously. It is a first U.S. pressing of Never Mind the Bollocks. Here's the Sex Pistols. With the insert. I always wondered where these photos came from. That you see everywhere in every book about the Sex Pistols. You know, you see the photos reproduced a lot. And I always was like... Okay, what's it? And so they had, they had been on this sleeve, I guess. Um, I don't know about the UK uh, first pressing. Now, here's the thing about this. I wanted to mention this about this. So what they did was the first pressing of the album. So you can see the track listings here, right? Well, one of them, Submission, was actually a sticker that they put on after the fact. And you can see here that the sticker had been removed. So this doesn't have the sticker. So if it had the sticker, of course, it would have been worth more money. If it had the sticker, in which it does not. And this is the U.S. pressing, correct? Yes, yes it is. Right? Cool. Yeah, you know, it's like, they were the first ones to do this, you know, with this sort of like, Bomb, you know, uh, bomb threat style, cutting out, you know, using the different, like, newspaper font letters is really, like, a good, you know, it's, like, super punk rock, you know, it was, like, they were the first ones to do it. It's, like, a nice pack, I, I really feel like it's, like, a nice package with that lime, see, now, lime green, right, it got real trendy there for a while. And now it's sort of become, it's like just a stable, like, you know, bright green, like the indie rockers used to wear, like the bright green retro, bright colored blue, red, green, like, you know, retro t-shirts that you get at a thrift store, like old baseball t-shirts or old, you know, bar shirts or, you know, Billy's Hideaway, you know, just the bright green. So then, if you remember, when bright green shirts became popular, that's where that came from, was in the indie rockers used to wear those bright colored shirts like that, and then green, everyone really glommed onto the green. Well, see, back then, green, that bright green, you know, it's just, it makes, it's, it's eye-catching. So I'm just saying, you know, 
I mean, who designed this stuff? Malcolm McLaren? I mean, I don't even know. But whoever did... Oh, no, they... There was an artist, yeah, that... I remember seeing this when I was a kid in the record stores, and it was just like, before I ever got it, dared to get it. I was actually like, whoa, what? That's that stuff is filthy. Like, what is it? It's dangerous, you know? I mean, that's when I was like a kid, 10, something like that. I think I ended up getting... I was like 11 or 12, finally. And then I also got from Dylan, this is killer, the, this is awesome right here. First pressing of David Bowie's Low. This was a little expensive. Uh, I should take care of this. This is a great album from his, you know, Berlin period. Low says it all. But really awesome record, Bowie. And there he is, classic Bowie. His hair's a little orange. You never see him really like like the way that he's looking here. I guess it's sort of like the thin white Duke thing, but he has orange hair. Or maybe that's just the reflection of the orange, you know, in his blonde hair. I don't know. It looks like he's got some type of a hooded sort of a wool jacket. I mean, he's just like looking kind of cool there, I think. Bowie, you know, you can't go wrong. And you can't go wrong with a first pressing of low as far as I'm concerned. All right, I also have this, Ramones. This is not, this is, it's just, it's a Ramones record from Halfway to Sanity. It's a Ramones record. It's, it's not an original, for, it's not a first pressing, but it is from back in the 70s. And it has the lyric sheet. And, oh, you know, I didn't get this from Dylan. That's right, I got this at the record store, yeah. From Dylan, I also got Tommy James and the Shondells, Crimson and Clover. Really cool song. And it's, it's a, it's a, the rest of the album is really good as well. They were great, they really were a great band. And I think that, you know, Joan Jett, so she covers that song, so it's, it's a guaranteed hit. I mean, it's a good song, you know. And she did a, a good job of it, but she knew it was going to be a hit. This record sounds really good, by the way. It's crackly. It's old. It's from 1963, I believe. Kind of pop, kind of crackly, but the sound is really good. And the song is just real. I mean, it's just a kind of an emotional song. And I can't I don't even know what the song's about, but it just, it has that emotional quality to it. You know, it's kind of sad. It's sort of kind of exhilarating and uplifting at the same time sort of wistful. Anyway, you know, Joan Jett covers that song knowing it's just going to be a hit. And it's nowhere near as good as the original. So, I don't know. It just made me, that was like the first thing I thought about when I was listening to it was, you know, the cover she did of it. Anyway, and Kate Bush. You know, there's another user out there, a guy that does vlogs, and he was talking about how he's really into Kate Bush. His whole family's really into Kate Bush. Kate Bush, and he did a video with his daughter, and his daughter's his young daughter, really into Kate Bush. So I decided to check her out, and I got this from Dylan. It is in the shrink wrap, although it's got a little rip in the shrink. Oh, this needs a jacket. Uh, it's punched, so it's some kind of promo, I guess, and it's got the hype sticker. Um, which she's really cool. They call it, you know, sort of art rock. She's got the real, you know, if you know the Kate Bush story, she was discovered by um, David Gilmore of Pink Floyd, and he helped her get her first record made on Harvest Records, you know, the, the Pink Floyd's record company, He, um, when he after he'd heard her. And she's got a really uh, very individual type of voice, and she brought this whole element of theater into her shows as well. So Kate Bush would highly recommend checking her out. He also, Dylan had, um, besides, you know, he so he sold me the Kate Bush record with a bunch of other records, and it kind of came to a lot of money, like more than I thought I was going to spend. And then he's, at the end, he's sort of like, oh, hey, how about, uh, I also have this, which was, uh, of course, something he probably knew I couldn't refuse, which is, a French edition of a little packet of seven inches with the Standells, the Chocolate Watch Band right here on the cover. Once I heard about the Chocolate Watch Band, I like 
Wow, couldn't uh, pass it up, but it's limited to 5,000 copies. Kenny and the Casuals, Chocolate Watchman, Bobby Fuller, Four, the Bobby Fuller, Bobby Fuller Four, the Standells, and the Haunted. And it's all kind of, you know, garage, psych, rock type stuff. French edition, um, limited edition to 5,000 copies. This little packet of seven inches, that was really cool. So, so he sold me that then too. And then he threw in this, uh, few seven inches one of and I didn't notice at the time but it's Kate Bush on stage a little gatefold seven inch a live performance of hers which is really good and then there's also this I want to show you this other thing um, that I got from him that he, he gave me another Kate Bush seven inch as well as he threw in and it's uh, Kate Bush um, December will be magic again I, I haven't listened to it yet it's some kind of Christmas thing maybe I don't know and then he threw in a Stranglers, 7-inch. I don't know a lot about them. No More Heroes. As well as... There was another one. Uh, no, there wasn't. Anyway. So that was about it. For what... You know, so what I got from him last time around. And then, just wanted to... A couple of... Something out in the mail recently is uh, Spiritualized, one of... You know, has been one of my favorite bands, you know, since the 90s. I mean, I don't listen to them much anymore because I listen to them so much. But Spiritualize, Any Way That You Want Me, song from the 60s remake that they did. This is uh, this is on Sub Pop, so it's not even on their usual label, Dedicated. But it is from the 90s, a Sub Pop Spiritualized release. Cool. It's very cool. Something else, this thing, it's called Hashish. It's a band that does, it's like electronica, kind of psychedelic electronica. Um, but they play instruments, so they electrify, you know, they use synthesizers on their guitars, I guess, and the drums. But it just sounds like electronica, but it's called hashish. They have it, they're from England. The records are from England as well, so they're kind of expensive. Like this 7-inch, this single was 16 bucks. So this is hashish, outer spaced, and the smoke of the hashish is the B-side. So I have the album as well, right here, actually. So this is the, that single is from this album, Hashish. Okay, really cool actually. Very cool sounding. Wish I could play it, but of course, you know, can't. But then of course, uh, with the Hashish album, is this really awesome poster of a green girl. Yeah. So, anyway, a product of hashish. New album. A product of hashish. That's what it's, the album is called, apparently. I guess. So, there you are. You know, I've got some other stuff that I've been listening to lately. I'm just, I'm going to wrap this up with going into, I've been listening to and purchasing a lot of, uh, oh no. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk about the ambient avant-garde sort of, um, you know, modern, classical, avant-garde type music next time, actually, because it's like, a bunch of those albums and I have them sort of arranged but I, I need to get them all together one last thing I wanted to say though is you know I'd gotten these records from um, you know Dylan a bunch of Bowie records recently as I mentioned well then I also have uh, the man who sold the world I got not from Dylan I was thinking I did but then I also to sort of compliment the things I've been getting from him I did get a copy of the man who sold the world and I had previously got now, originally, when The Man Who Sold the World was released in England, it came with this cover. Kind of an odd cover for a Bowie record, you would think. Well, nobody liked it, and so what they did was they discontinued it right away. And I don't know if they used this cover, or there's another Man Who Sold the World cover where he's wearing a dress and he's sitting on a couch. And apparently his buddy, I forgot the guy's name, the guy that was the mime, that he studied under to study mime and theater with him. Um, that guy kind of got him into wearing dresses and stuff and sort of exploring different ways of dressing. Anyway, 
So there's those, there's three covers total. So this first one, okay, the cartoon cover, you know, if you have one, it's worth a lot of money, very rare type of a thing. So I bought it thinking that that was the case. Buyer beware. There are bootlegs of this cover. What they did was somebody took the record, went and recorded it on reel to reel and made a record out of it. Okay. That sounds fine. Apparently it sounds good and it does sound good. I listened to it. It sounds like a, you know, a pretty decent record from that time, a good record at that, from that time, but it is, it's a bootleg. So it's not an original, it's not authentic. And so it's not worth as much. It's worth like, you know, this original, the original, the real one would be worth like 40 to a hundred bucks, say, depending on the condition. Whereas the bootleg is worth like 15 bucks. And so what happened was I went and checked it on Discogs and sure enough, it says explicitly in the Discogs listing for this record, the first thing that it says when you look it up is that the matrix numbers, okay, that's the numbers in the dead wax in the part where when the record ends, it's that blank stuff, the blank part right around the label. In the dead wax, they etch information there, numbers about the pressing, catalog numbers, uh, whether it's a mother, which mother was used to make the record, that sort of thing. Anyway, um, this one, if it is an etched matrix number, if the matrixes are etched, it's a fake. The real ones are stamped. Also, there's a couple little things about how on the back there's this caption these people are saying, oh, by Jingo, which is a lyric from the record. This caption is actually, on the real one, it's closer to this other lettering, to these lyrics that are printed here. The caption is closer on the real one, and it's further away on the fake. And it's really easy to tell, though we explain how you can tell. And then also, there's this other thing where there are these little stripes right here. You can see these stripes up here on the um, the jacket on the very upper upper corner on the real one the stripes go all the way over on the fake they don't and so this in fact turned out to be the fake I brought it into the record store and he pretty much I thought I would just get a refund for the whole record kind of is what I was thinking but he's like okay I'll just refund you the difference which 14 bucks minus you know because they're going for like 14 so anyway I figured yeah well you know why not keep it I mean it's kind of a cool thing to have actually and then eventually I might want to actually get the real one I mean I'm not like that into it because it's it is kind of like a stupid cover especially for a David Bowie record when you look at all you know the way that his covers usually look there's nothing like that okay so you know that is just about it and thanks and I'll talk to you soon I'm gonna do a Velvet Underground video really soon on the my first pressings of Velvet Underground records because I've got a few of them now and I could do a whole video, 12 minute video just on that. So anyway, thanks. Please subscribe, like, tell your friends, come back, watch more. Thank you. Subscribe. Thumbs up. Thank you.